What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. Well, rather than ruining a good video, why not do a voiceover when your microphone decides to crash on you randomly? So, what we're here for today is a very exciting video. It's going to be the FlightScope Mebo Plus Face Impact Location for Driver. So many people asked to see this, but we're also gonna show off the FlightScope FS Golf for PC app. Been using this a lot. Uh, you know, this is a nice piece of software that you can use right from your PC, connect into the FlightScope using Wi-Fi, and they've actually released a few different updates that I'm gonna show you just to kind of show you that the lighting needs to be a certain way, etc. But if you guys are looking to purchase a FlightScope Mevo Plus or any of the add-ons like the Pro Package or Face Impact Location, make sure you check out the link in the discount code I'll pin to the top of the comments and put in the description. As always, if you're looking to purchase uh, any golf simulator hardware or software or build your own golf simulator, make sure you shoot me an email. I'll put that in the description and comments as well. Um, love to get you guys you know, the best information and pricing that's available out there. Um, but other than that, we're ready to go. I've got the FlightScope FS Golf app pulled up on the PC and we're going to go ahead and walk over there and just kind of give you guys a quick rundown of everything. If you notice in the upper right, it shows I'm connected. I'm at 12.1 and just uh, 0.2 of roll. We'll go in the settings really quick where you'll see the rest of the setup. I'm seven feet unit to ball. Um, so we're good to go there. I've got the latest AVR and DSP firmware. You can set up video if you're looking to do swing recording, even using the video uh, camera inside of the Mevo Plus. They have focus band. They have the body track that you can connect. And then there's general settings, which is very important to point out that they have a software suggestion and feedback built into this application. I really suggest that you guys use that, uh, especially if you're having any concerns, you can submit them data and it's gonna tell them what is going on in your environment and help diagnose any of that. So very important to use that support tool inside of the software. And then there's session settings, which is just what it should be. Um, you have, you know, organize your data, things along those lines. Then if we look at the main screen, um, you have full swing, you have swing training, which is pretty cool because you can hit without a ball and it just shows your swing data. And then you have chipping, which is kind of covered up there, I apologize. And then they have the cloud, where you can upload all your stuff to the FlightScope cloud, and then also review session. And I'll go ahead and go into a session really quick and show you guys, here's a, uh, eight iron that I did, but you can search by calendar, you can search by session name or player or club. It's really cool how you can do all that. But let's go into this eight iron swing really quick and I'll just show you this little cut that I was working on. Hit this one really well in the center of the face. Um, you know, it's cool that you can just go in and just easily review shots, you know, from inside the application that easily. So um, now after that, I think I go back to the main screen and I think we're good to go to set up a full swing session. So hit start session. Um, notice that my radar is set up to limited flight. I did talk a little bit about limited flight versus short indoor. The reason they changed this was the confusion. People thought that they couldn't use short indoor if they were outside hitting into a net. It had nothing to do with indoor or outdoor. It just had to do with the flight distance. So they just called it limited flight, which is really easy to understand. Um, you know, seven to nine feet uh, sensor to T and then eight feet minimum flight ball to either screen or net, whatever you're using. And then obviously outdoor for unrestricted ball flight. So, um, we're good to go. Radar set up seven feet to ball. You'll see my T surface height is zero. So we're all set on that target alignment. I don't have the ball sitting there. Um, actually I did have the ball sitting there and you can see it's basically dead center. So we're good to go on that. And then we'll go through setup verification which is actually very important. Um, it's uh, have it, that's on selected wedge. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wedge and take a quick little shot and it's gonna verify a couple things. One, it's going to verify the average horizontal offset. So I just take a little swing there and from where that ball took off, it was only 0.2 degrees to the left. All right, but also the most important thing, the lighting conditions, you'll see it's sufficient. And now that they show using a lux meter, you have to have 300 of lux within a three feet radius, all points of the hitting location. And I talked a lot about this. I have a video you guys should see. Um, I just did it, it's showing my Lux readings inside the studio. I have a lot more than this, but I also have a very dark environment. I have black walls, black ceiling, so there's very little ambient light. And so depending on your environment, you might need a lot more than 300 Lux, you know, in order to actually get that ambient light for the camera to operate properly. So I'm glad they've made these adjustments and everything so you can easily understand if it's working for you, but very important things. And then we'll go ahead and click the next button 
and you know environment we're just going to use you know standard stuff players uh that's me and then driver selection and then golf ball we're going to use the rct ball and now we're good to go and i'll actually show you guys uh the sticker on the face of the driver so you can uh, see what i'm working with it doesn't mark as good as an iron when you hit the ball, probably because of the grooves on the iron make more of an impact. But my goal was is to make you know a handful of swings, maybe not hit them perfect so they're all over the face. I had, it's funny, a little bit of difficulty the first couple of swings. Um, I actually hit them pretty decent um, you know, as far as where I hit them on the face. This one was a little bit toe bound. And if you look at this, without any calibration, I mean, it is just spot on. And I'm just pointing out right now about how it's gonna be a little difficult to see, but you can actually see it quite well when I was reviewing the video. Um, and you'll notice the sticker doesn't fit perfectly on the face, but what I tried to do is, is make sure it was level and as center as possible where their dot was. But look at that. I mean, if you look at where that hit, that's just below center. You can see the blue dots. There's little dimples that start showing up on that sticker. And there you go. Yeah, you can see it quite well now. I mean, it's just a little toe bound and just a little below center is where that hit. And I apologize, it's not focusing perfect, but you can see the imprint of the ball. Um, might do another review maybe using, you know, uh, some foot spray, but you can clearly, you know, identify those blue dots in the video on the face. So we'll tee up another ball here. My goal, like I said, was to hit a few random shots um, all over the face so you guys could see how this, you know, would perform at different, you know, points of the face. And then, of course, I line up for my second shot here and uh, I hit another decent shot. But that's okay because it actually kind of imprinted over the other imprint and got a little bit darker. So I think it actually shows up a little better for you guys. This one end up being a little bit lower but more center on the face. Um, but relatively in a close area of where that other one was. But you can see now, see how it got darker towards the center? I mean, that is just spot on, just a little bit lower than the other one. And you can see those impact marks now a lot more clear. See how that one was just a little bit lower, but it was center on the face. So like I said, it's not showing up perfect, but enough for you guys to see that the ball is hitting within a millimeter, you know, on, on the, between the, head that it hit the sticker and obviously in the software with no calibration is what's amazing so my goal here was is to do a uh, off center hit so i was gonna try to do i think a a, a toe shot first maybe um i'm trying to remember if it was going to be a toe shot or a heel shot uh yeah toe shot first and look how far to the toe that was and you're going to see that thing come up on the face boom I mean, that is spot on, maybe just a tiny bit high versus what's showing on the driver. Um, but I mean, right towards the toe, maybe like I said, a millimeter high or so. And if you wanted to fine tune that, you can go into the calibration um, and fine tune that. I apologize it wasn't focusing that well on the camera. I kind of had to get just a little bit further away, I think, to get it to focus. It almost looks a little bit better back there, but you can see the dot really easily. There we go, that's a good focus. Um, I mean, that is just awesome that it can read them that far towards the toe. Like I said, that one might be a millimeter or so high. I could go into my calibration and adjust that just a tiny bit. But if you look at the center point on the face, I mean, you're talking minimal, maybe a millimeter high than what's shown in the software, but uh, zero calibration. I mean, obviously working you know, really well. So the goal now was to try to hit a heel shot because I hit two towards the center of the face that were reading well. I hit the toe shot that was reading well. And what I wanted to do is try to hit a heel shot here. Um, and I think I do a, a decent job of this. So take a good crack at it and try to give you guys a bunch of different, you know, random shots. That way you can see how the impact location is reflecting of where you hit. So this is a high heel is where it was. And then if you look on the face where I'm gonna point, there you go, there's the blue markings, a high heel. So it's a little tough to see on that one, but once again, you can see the dimples. You can see the blue dimples on the face of the sticker there. Would have probably been a little bit better to use, you know, foot spray, like I said, but you can see the blue dimples on the face. Um, it just doesn't work quite as good as it does with, uh, uh, you know, on iron, I think that the 
lines on the wedge, the grooves are giving it more of like an impact in the sticker and kind of like exposing the blue more. But I really think this is a perfect example for you guys uh, to show that lighting is important. You do need to check your lighting in your environment, what's going to work for you. And if you do that, you may want to calibrate. I did not calibrate for iron or driver because I think that it's good to also show what the stock you know, results are gonna be without having to calibrate or adjust. And so I saw maybe minimal differences, you know, we're talking a millimeter or so difference. Um, I never had to second guess if it was heel or toe or if it was high or center strike or anything. And I think that's uh, that's really important to know. Um, so uh, as, as I mentioned before, if you guys, uh, you know, haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, you know, please do uh, make sure you look, check out the link down in the description and in the comments and you know use that discount code to uh, get yourself a discount on a flight scope mevo plus if you're looking for one or if you're looking to do the pro package or the face impact location you can use that on all that stuff um, it's nice being able to buy direct from flight scope that's why i partnered with them on this um, and obviously trying to get you guys you know the best information but also pricing i do want to let you guys know that there have been updates to the FS Golf PC software as well as firmware. So if you are testing this on your own, make sure that you download the latest software that's available, the FS Golf PC software, and then also use your iPhone and connect to your device and download and install the latest firmware on your device to make sure you're getting the best results. All right, and then as always, if you guys are looking to build your own home golf simulator, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to consult with you guys and make sure what's going to work in your environment. Um, we can even discuss uh, you know, lighting or anything along those lines that you might need to look for. But uh, I know what's working well in mine. It's going to be different. Every environment's different. Like I talked about, the ambient lighting is key. Do not use a pin spot. That harsh circle is not going to work for something like this. All right, so do not use a pin spot. Use something that has a nice glow like that. But I think that we saw some excellent results today from the FlightScope Mevo Plus with driver and door on the face impact location. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments down below, so make sure you use those down below. And like I said, as always, if you have any questions or anything along those lines, make sure you reach out. I'll be happy to help you guys, and then check out the link and the discount code in the description below. But stay tuned, we'll have a lot more coming soon covering the FlightScope Mevo Plus, and then also face impact location and other features. Thanks for watching.